One of the big questions that members have been asking me over the last couple of weeks is what the economic impact of COVID-19 is going to be. I've asked HIA's Chief Economist Tim Reardon to join me to talk through it. Um, there's no other way to say it. It's not going to be a good year for the building industry after 2014 to 2018 being record boom years. We're now looking at some, some very difficult numbers over the course of the next couple of years. For us, the really big one is population growth. And the concern is, is that this year, or sorry, for the last 20 years, we've been looking at one and a half, one point six percent population growth. And that's been central to Australia's 28 years of continuous economic growth. And this year, if, if that falls below one percent, and it's certainly quite possible that it falls significantly below that, then that that will flow through to home building over the course of the next few years. And and if if population growth remains low, then what we're looking at then is not the V-shaped recovery that we're hoping. We hope that this downturn is short and sharp, the market comes down and then it accelerates as, as these restrictions come off. The concern is if these restrictions remain in place too long, that we see a structural change in the economy, we see a slowdown in population growth, and then we get what's known as an L-shaped recovery where the market comes down and then flattens off at the bottom. Reality is we're probably looking at something in between those two scenarios, uh, a more of a U-shape or a hockey stick shape uh, recovery over the course of however long, uh, the next year or two. But it certainly is a dramatic turnaround from what we're expecting in February. February this year, we're expecting the market to continue to pick up, to continue to pull out of this downturn. Instead, we've seen a, a very dramatic change. Very dramatic indeed. Um, I wondered if you could talk a little more specifically, I suppose, about how this will impact in Western Australia. Um, over the past couple of years, the market experience here has been quite out of step with the East Coast. We've had several years of um, effectively a plateau um, and we were finally seeing some signs of recovery earlier this year, but um, I think that will obviously change now. Yeah, no, you guys are going to, to keep out of step, I think, with the rest of the country whilst you're going to experience this downturn in inevitably. The downturn in WA won't be as significant as what it will be on the East Coast, and there's a few reasons for that. Uh, first of all, your reliance, your industry structure is quite different. The reliance on tourism isn't as strong as what it is, say, in Queensland or Tasmania. And as a consequence, you're not going to see that reduction in gross state product. You've also got the mining sector remaining relatively strong, possibly pulling forward over the course of the next few years. And I don't think that it's going to be as directly uh, adversely impacted as all other sectors. It's probably going to remain one of the better sectors to have your economy based upon. The second is because you've already had a dramatic slowdown in population growth, your growth rate's been below 1% in the course of the last few years. Because you're not taking in overseas migrants, you're not going to see that collapse in overseas migration during the course of this year. And that will leave you in better stead as well on that front. And the third is that unlike anywhere else in the country, there is a little bit of pent up demand in the housing market in Perth. The very low rate of building that you've had over the past couple of years, you haven't been building enough homes to meet demographic demand. And, and we know that exists because not just from house price increases in the last four or five months, but also most importantly from rental price growth and you've had some of the strongest rental price growth in the country for the past uh, six months and that just tells us that the number of people living in each dwelling has been increasing in Perth over the past couple of years and it's reached a breaking point and the market was ready to go again and we could see that all the way through to the end of February and all of the data that we're getting through now it's very unfortunate that that's not going to flow through, not going to continue to flow during the course of this year. I wondered if you could talk a bit more specifically about how the residential construction sector in particular will fare during this period. Obviously, um, our business cycles, our, our customer journey, our cash flow is different to, to a, a retail shop, for instance. So we're going to talk about lag length and magnitude over the course of the next six months. And so lag is the amount of time it takes for a shock, an exogenous shock, as we call it, to impact on home building. And that ranges between about three months through to nine months, depending on a couple of factors. One's the nature of the shock and the two is the amount of work you have in the pipeline. In the case of WA, we wouldn't expect to see the, the lag uh, much longer than three months. It's going to take a few months before commencements are impacted by this shock. The length of time that lasts then is dependent on, on how long these restrictions may be in place and the magnitude I, I've covered. But 
If we look at that as it flows through the supply chain, then we're talking about uh, July timeframe being when the number of commencements we would expect to start to see to slow in WA. And then that takes typically seven months to from commencement through to completion of a detached house. And so as that time frame progresses, other uh, segments of the building construction industry, other suppliers will see uh, that, that flow through to their supply chains as well. So really important that policymakers understand, I suppose, the, that, that cycle for our sector as a large employer in the Australian economy as they're looking to see how they can support uh, lives and livelihoods at this time. Thank you very much for joining me, Tim. That's really helpful. Um, if people have if other queries for Tim, other topics that you'd like to get his analysis on, please send me a direct message or, or include a comment down below. Um, then we'll pass them on to him and get him back to share his insights over the next couple of months. Thank you.